Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds where I like to collect together all the albums and things that I've purchased over the past week. And in this case, stuff people send to me as well. I got some cool things, little added bonuses here to show you guys as well. And so I'm gonna run through the 22 CDs or 22 items that I got and uh, break that all down for you, give you a little bit of background on it and stuff like that. Maybe turn you on to something. And uh, we'll do that here in just a bit. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus by turning on notifications, you're gonna stay up to date on really cool episodes just like this with new music finds. So as I always do, I like to start off with new releases. And if you've been following my channel and you saw, I got an early copy of the brand new Van Halen box set. So I was super, super excited to buy this. This is the one that is the Sammy Hagar years. Uh, five CDs in here. Uh, they just uh, slide out from the side like that, each one and in their individual case. Um, they're done really nicely in the way that they're packaged. I have a few uh, complaints about it in general in terms of... Uh, uh, the quality, the mixing, uh, that sort of stuff, the remastering on it. But all in all, it's pretty cool. So if you do want to know more about that, uh, you can check the, the description. There's a link in there. Uh, I just posted this a few days earlier. So uh, you can get in on that before it actually drops uh, this Friday, October 6th. Uh, find out if you want to pick it up or not. Okay, uh, on the ones that actually did come out this past week, September 29th, uh, first one up is one that uh, I was super excited about myself. It's the brand new K.K.'s Priest, the Center Right Again album. Um, I have also done a full review of this. It just posted, I believe, yesterday. So um, you can check that out too. I'm going to leave a link in the description for that. But uh, this one here, second studio album from K.K. Downing and Tim Ripper Owens, two former Judas Priest members. And and in my opinion, this one is better than the debut uh, Sermons of the Center. So if you like that album, you're going to like this one. If maybe you weren't into that one, check this one out. I highly recommend it. I think this is classic metal and definitely worthy of any metalhead checking out uh, this new KK's Priest. Um, I did also pick up uh, the LP version of it as well. Uh, just give you guys a show here, but of course, uh, same thing as uh, the CD version that I just showed you guys. So. Uh, next one was uh, one that I didn't have high hopes for. In fact, the first single off of it didn't really move me at all. And I was just picking it up because of who it is. Ann Wilson and her new band, Trip Sitter, their debut album is called Another Door. And of course, Ann Wilson from Heart. And I first listened to the singles. And again, like I said, they didn't do anything for me. Then I listened to it digitally and it didn't connect with me and I immediately moved on. But when I put on the CD and there is something different about putting on an album and listening to it versus streaming something or just listening to a single, when you hear it all in context, I think it changes things. I found myself really enjoying the album. In fact, by song three, I think the album really picks up and gets even better as the album goes on. So if you do like those first two songs, you're gonna like it if you stick with it even more. But I found myself pleasantly surprised by this and I ended up listening to it three times in a row. I put it on and I was just kind of trying to get through it. I thought, you know, it didn't hit me. I'm gonna put it on. I'll kind of force myself to listen to it and it just got better and better and better. So much so, I wanted to listen to it again. And when I got done with it that time, I started it over. So. I don't know, I think it's a pretty darn good album and would recommend it out. Ann Wilson's uh, last couple solo albums have been cover albums. And so this here is all original music. Uh, it's not necessarily in the vein of heart, but it is actually closer in sounding to that than some of the recent heart albums that I thought had a much more modern tinge to them than the classic stuff of the 70s. So check that out, Ann Wilson and Trip Sitter. Okay, being a big Pink Floyd fan, I had to pick this one up, but it's The Orb featuring David Gilmour called Metallic Spheres and Color and is a new reimagining and a remix of their 2010 album that was simply just called Metallic Spheres. And if you recall that album cover, it was black and gray or silver maybe, uh, whereas obviously this one, 
in color. Um, so different album artwork to a different sound to it. Um, I actually connected with this one far better than I did the original one. This one here moved me a lot more. So uh, maybe if the first one didn't move you, maybe this is going to be the right one. But I actually found myself really enjoying it. If you like those instrumental intros that are on albums like Momentary Lapse of Reason at the very beginning or the one that is on uh, Division Bell, that's a lot of what this album sounds like. Uh, it is all instrumental, and so I sort of look at it that way, and it's actually a really cool mood setting piece, and I uh, have found myself enjoying it quite immensely. But then again, I found a lot of albums that didn't connect with me, you know, a decade earlier or something. Sometimes I pull those out and they work now. Um, so you got that. Okay, uh, moving on to other things that I picked up. Uh, first thing up was, um, Something I ended up ordering off of eBay, but it's from the UK. I picked up the magazine Uncut in order to get this Who album that comes with it. Uh, one of my viewers out there told me about it. I didn't know anything about it. I was very glad to find there was a compilation of a single disc compilation of tracks from the Mega 10 CD Who's Next Lifehouse box set. And some of this is different than the bonus disc that is in the two CD edition of it. So incidentally, I ended up returning my two CD edition of it because I'd only bought it for the bonus disc and I decided to keep the one that has its own art, comes in its own sleeve. So 10 tracks, selections from that kind of covers both some of the stuff from Who's Next, some of the demos, some of the different studio takes, some of the live material, all on here. It's part of the November edition, so it's already out in the UK, but it hasn't dropped here in the US. Perhaps it hasn't dropped in other territories either. So keep an eye out for it. Uh, the editions here in the US run a month or two behind when they come out in the UK. So perhaps uh, towards the end of October, uh, you'll start to see it pop up in stores, but you can get yourself a 10 CD Who compilation from their most recent 10 CD box set. Okay, um, next one is I picked up a Steve Miller Band compilation that I didn't know existed. This is uh, a decade of hits and it spans from 76 to 86. Nothing overly fantastic or amazing about it. It was just, I felt like I wanted to have it in my collection. And so uh, it does have the song Fly Like an Eagle and tracks from that. But it also has songs from uh, Book of Dreams, but then, uh, Abracadabra's on here. Thing is, it skips over a few albums within that. It does have songs from Italian X-Ray. In fact, I think it has five or six of them on here. So definitely focuses on that album from 84. But even though it says it goes up to year 86, it doesn't have anything from Living in the 21st Century, which was released in 86. So a little odd, but then all of the compilations are kind of that way with him. He'll put years on them. The 74 to 78 really only covers uh, 76 to 77. It doesn't have anything from 78 or 74 uh, on it unless you count uh, the Joker single itself that is included, but that was really from 73. So whole other thing, but it was just kind of a cool uh, compilation official one on Mercury Records that I decided to put into my collection. Uh, another compilation, uh, again, you can see how this was tying into things that I was picking up from past weeks, but with the uh, recent Paul Rogers solo album, I was digging deep into that sort of stuff, and I found this, a very cool Free and Bad Company uh, compilation album that was done by Rhino Records that splits up the first half as Bad Company and the second half as Free, and it just flows wonderfully together, um, picks sort of the creme de la creme of both bands, and it was nice getting it on here in the way that they chose to organize it has both hits at the beginning hits at the end and it just kicks off or it just you know flows all the way through very very well but very cool paul rogers uh version of uh, both free and bad company uh stuff and uh one paul rogers solo album i did not have in my collection was muddy water blues and i already always steered clear of this because i'm not a big fan of the blues and I'm not a fan of Muddy Waters. And so I just didn't uh, dive into this. And I remember listening to it back in the day. It came out in 93 and it did not move me at all. Even though the list of guitar players on here is a who's who. We got Jeff Beck, David Gilmore, Brian May, Steve Miller, Gary Moore, Trevor Rabin, Richie Sambora, Neil Sean, uh, Brian Setzer, Slash. I mean, it just goes on. It's, it's amazing. 
but it is more blues based. Now, funny thing is I went ahead and just picked it up because I found it used and I popped it on and I ended up really enjoying it. So it just goes to show you how your musical taste can change. I am glad I added this to my collection. It was one more thing to have and enjoy during uh, the release of his new album that just had me going down the rabbit hole of all things Paul Rogers added a free album that I didn't have uh, to the collection, Fire and Water, classic one at that, of course, the one that has All Right Now on it, and then the title track, uh, Fire and Water on it, also has the song Mr. Big, which I know, and um, is where, uh, of course, the glam metal band of the late 80s, early 90s took its name from, so I always knew that about them, but it was great to finally get it on an album, so just adding that into the collection, slowly flushing out my free albums. I think I have three left to get. I've got three of the six. Um, and then um, I picked this up. Chip and Donnie Brothers. Um, it was a pseudo solo album that was released in Japan only back in 94, I think. But it was actually recorded as um, a companion album with their album tweaked and all as enough's enough so enough's enough went into this studio recorded a double album and it got split and so the more acoustic half was released in japan as chip and donnie whereas the more heavier more modern sounding stuff that fit the era 1994 i think was tweaked or maybe it was 95 uh, that got released in the u.s and around the world as an enough's enough album then fast forward two albums the band did release the Chip and Donnie album, the more acoustic laden pop stuff as seven. And so it has come out as an Enough's Enough album, but started out as this. Nothing different between them, but I just wanted to finally add that Japanese copy of it into my uh, collection and have. All right, now I mentioned that I got sent some stuff. So the last 11 things that I got here were sent to me and it comes from Dan Flintcroft. And so he sent me a message through Facebook. It was really nice of him to reach out to me. He's from a band called Sergeant Thunderhoof. And uh, they're from the UK, Somerset. And he sent me um, 11 discs. And it's cool. It, first of all, it's very... Um, Nice to get his entire catalog here, and I haven't had a chance to dig into it just yet, but I've dug into some of the other stuff. I listen to it streaming-wise. People reach out to me all the time, and I'm not trying to play favorites here. Um, if you guys sent, you want me to hear something, I'll listen to it. I need a link. Uh, if I can stream it through like Apple Music, I do, and I happen to connect with this. He reached out and he said, hey, I see that you're a fan of Black Sabbath. Uh, my band has that similar sort of sound. I think you might enjoy it. Uh, check it out, and if you like what we do, you know, pick an album and I'll send it to you. Well, I picked out two albums, and I wanna point out uh, the two that at least jumped out to me. So, uh, Terra Solace. This album here, I thought, out of all the ones that I had heard, uh, was my favorite. Uh, so I requested that one, but the other one, and you guys know I'm a Pink Floyd fan, so it was this, The Delicate Sound of Thunderhoof. Uh, name of the band being Sergeant Thunderhoof. So I just immediately made that connection to Pink Floyd and their album Delicate Sound of Thunder. This is an acoustic record and it kind of replicates that album cover as well. And I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot. So I initially only requested these two, but he was kind enough to send to me not only the whole catalog, but some other cool stuff, including some um, split singles that they did with other bands. But it's these next three things that I absolutely fell in love with. So one, I would tell you, if you're a fan of Black Sabbath or that sort of uh, proto-metal, stoner metal type sound, check out this UK-based band called Sergeant Thunderhoof. They're available to stream, uh, certainly on Apple Music, probably on Spotify, which is even bigger at all of that. Um, but it was these. So uh, the label that they're on, and I believe it's his label or they're involved in it, but Pale Wizard, and that's actually where you can order this stuff from. You go to palewizard.co. UK. And I'm going to leave a link in the description for you guys to do that if you're interested. You can track this down because you can't get it from like Amazon, at least not locally, um, but you can head over to the website to get it. But anyway, the label has been doing these um, 
They call it the uh, 50 Years Later series, and they're putting out uh, sort of tribute albums, all of one artist music and one particular album per year. So 1971, they start with Alice Cooper Killers. And it's just, you know, got a whole bunch of uh, bands. Uh, I don't know if they're all on the label, uh, Pale Wizard or not, but they all have that same other vibe. So you can imagine a sort of stoner metal sound doing Alice Cooper Killers for 1971. Then for 72, they chose Ziggy Stardust and Spiders from Mars um, album itself. Uh, and uh, for 73, they went with Budgie. And uh, this one here, which is uh, Never Turn Your Back on a Friend. And I gotta say, man, I am just falling in love with these. And apparently they're gonna move ahead and they're gonna do uh, more of these. So we'll be getting one for 74 and 75 and so forth. So keep an eye out for those. I know I will. I'm gonna be picking up uh, the rest of these. They've made a fan out of me and I can't wait to see more of these releases. And I've already uh, checked out, you know, from some of these albums, I've heard some of the other bands on here. Uh, one of them, um, Aluna. Uh, A-L-U-N-A-H sounded great. I checked them out. Regulus, uh, which is spelled R-E-G-U-L-U-S. Uh, two bands that I'd never heard of before. So I'm finding some great new stuff. Maybe you will too if you go and check out palewizard.co.uk. Um, and certainly check out Sergeant Thunderhoof. I found a new band that I like. And again, uh, thank you to Dan Flintcroft for reaching out to me. I do really appreciate you sending me your catalog of stuff, sharing your music with me. That was very nice of you. All right, everyone. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode of the things that I chose to pick up, the new releases, and also this cool stuff that uh, was sent to me. All in all, uh, 22 items that I got this past week. I'm having a lot of fun listening to it all. Hopefully you guys got some new stuff. Let me know what you got. What's your favorite find of the last week? week. Hopefully we're going to have many, many more new finds for this upcoming week. Uh, don't forget that new Van Halen box set. Where's mine? There it is. October 6th. Check it out. And uh, if you're on the fence about it, check out the review. Again, I'll leave a link in the description for that. All right, everyone. Take care. Have a good one. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.